Okay, recording here. So today's session, uh, today's session is on microfactory infrastructures. So what I'll talk about is if you're going to produce um, in a distributed way, there's different different scales you can do that at, from a very basic home scale workshop like with a 3D printer, up to our case is a 4,000 square foot small microfactory with heavy equipment in there to build things like tractors and brick presses and 3D printers and everything else and build parts for houses like modules for a house and stuff like that. Uh, but let's go through what it takes, what, what the cost is and then what the kind of productivity you can expect for investing in one of these infrastructures. So let's start with the very basic. You're, you're getting out of college, you want to get into open source production right there and you want to start small, you can go right in your college dorm, you can start with a 3D printer. So the 3D printer there is a $500 investment for uh, if you build it yourself, say a thousand bucks if you buy it, um, ar around there like 500 a thousand bucks. But then what kind of productivity do you get from that? If you're, if you're running a print cluster with like say five pounds of printing power per 24 hours, <coughs> the productivity is already such that Let's take a look at the kits that we were producing, like the the full printer or the small education kits, the D3D simples. You can produce pro one of those probably one every one or two days, uh, either one or two days, depending on which one you do. So in an entire month, you know, what's the productivity for a month? You can do 15 to 30, uh, one to two days, 15 to 30, if you're selling kits, let's say. So that would be the start of a small business. So even with one printer running in your college dorm, um, you can do something like that. If you talk about 15, say 15 machines produced in a, in a month where you just have the print printer just cranking away and making parts. And of course, there's, uh, if you say you're selling a kit for a 3D printer, you're going to get other, a bunch of other off-the-shelf parts. Uh, we, we do it at, uh, our baseline here is that we, we sell kits uh, kits, full kits that you, with all the parts for about $300 above the bill of materials cost. So if you're doing your own print cluster, 15 times three, uh, 15 printers built in a month times 30, uh, $300, that's $4,500 uh, revenue. And we're talking about net here, like in our case. So even with one printer, so that's like the absolute minimum case. In our case, the uh, interestingly, it turns out that the D3D Simple, um, we're making one that's mounted on a table, but also we're making another one that's dedicated for a wall mount. So if you're super tight on space, you know you barely have a space to fit your desk and bed in your college dorm, you can mount this on a wall if you have a wall. So it's actually, a, we'll, we'll show that later. We'll, we'll probably offer these as a kit offering as well, the wall mounted version. But think about a cluster, you know, right on your wall. It's not, you know, literally like, okay, hang it on this wall, uh, up on the hall wall, where the space issue is a, is a big one. I mean, if you have a printer, you'd need a table for it, or if you're stacking them, you need multiple tables. The infrastructure there actually adds up for how you're producing uh, on, on the super small scale. So we're making that available by wall mounting. The other part about um, the feasibility in a household setting, house-like setting, is, I mean, there's noise. 3D printers make noise. So there is a solution right now. You can get silent stepper drivers, basically um, uh, the electronics that you use, paying about 20 or so more dollars or 30 more dollars per printer. You can access fully silent operation of the of the 3D printer. So you, you don't even hear it. So it can be right next to your bed if you're sensitive to noise. Uh, and it'll be running, cranking away from you using digital fabrication to, to make $4,500 in a base case scenario uh, that I just described. Now, of course, with selling anything, you have to uh, do marketing. So we're not, we're not saying this is like, oh yeah, this is free lunch here. Um, there is, if you're running a business, a small startup, there's a lot of different elements. So, but at least on the production side, it's the productivity is there. So if you can sell the printers, you have a, you have a viable business. And the missing link in my view, um, I would say it's, it's the product designs. Like right now, the 3D printer itself is not your block. Uh, I think our printer, the 3, 3D print, D3D 3D printer, uh, it's a design particularly for zero access barriers, uh, completely off the shelf parts. If you have another 3D printer, you can print more parts for it. 
uh, as opposed to any other printer on the market, which may be more difficult or not as not as accessible. We're really, really focusing on a on a lifetime design aspect, where if we design it to be modular and super simple, made off the common shelf, sh common off the shelf parts, then really anybody can do it. So that's a great value proposition for collaborative development. It, it's also in some way safe from enclosure, like say a big company takes a design and uh, just runs with it and beats everybody out of the market. Like that's that's a fear for a lot of uh, open hardware people. Let's say, uh, what if a company big company snaps you up snaps up your technology because it's open source and then just goes nuts producing it well if everybody has access to that design and it's low cost the big company has no advantage uh, if a thousand people can start producing the thing with minimal access barriers like even in your college dorm room or whatever um, you're producing parts and producing kits that kind of a design where it's where it's super accessible prevents prevents the the un, unequal playing ground that's typically found with uh, big corporations so uh, that's a great deal so one printer scenario uh, take take that same printer and then uh, expand that cluster to 12 like that our kind of a prototype model cluster the ideal scenario would be 12 printers where in a month you can produce a hundred kits let's say well a hundred kits that's thirty thousand dollars net that's that's net after parts costs of value that you can generate uh, that's that would be a robust case which is a perfect small uh, small enterprise uh, producing useful uh, either printers or useful parts and once again I emphasize that if we curate a whole set of uh, excellent designs that are printable on the printers we can for example market the printer and here's your you know your USB stick full of designs that you can just start producing because the production engineering has been worked out and so forth. Uh, one of the big challenges here is that whenever you go to print something, you, you have to pay attention to a lot of details. It's not like running a piece of software where it just runs. With 3D printing, it's still you have much more hands-on and understanding of the actual machine. You don't just hit print and it, it works um, unless you have the exact settings, exact temperatures, exact machine, exact software, and all of that. Uh, so Pre preparing a package of here's a printer and a bunch of great files great design files that you can go into production with that's that would be a great value proposition uh, we're developing that as part of our kits that we will be selling so so here we can say here's a printer and go nuts producing these already developed products with pretty much refined production engineering all the details have been worked out for the settings and everything else so we can go into production so um, so the household scale is 3d printers uh, the noise or pollution or other effects where you can't do it in a home no the, the 3d printers lend themselves to that you can uh, silently uh, pollution free get into begin product producing things now if you talk about producing out of materials like ABS or PVC I mean that that has fumes associated with it so there would be additional systems required to to address that but using bioplastics like PLA maybe TPU or PETG well the first one is a bioplastic but other some other materials that are perfectly safe for the home environment you don't have to worry about uh, pollution or breathing the fumes and stuff like that so let's go to the next next level of workshop I, I'll kind of cover like three 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 or four main ones second level is the garage workshop so that means now you're allowing some more noise and 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 fume to to arise from the production you can in a garage workshop you can start adding tools like cut off like metal cut off or wood cut off uh, the the main addition like if you're doing work with metal uh, that would be a grinder so for 15 bucks right now you can get a grinder which is a device to that can either grind or cut metal um, but that does have a lot of sparks with it and a lot of dust so uh, you can't necessarily do that in your living room so that's what we call it the garage workshop but in there depending on how much space you have you can have up to things like you can have a welder in there you can have a, a torch uh, so so the grinders and abrasive cutoff saws are what we use a lot to, to cut things to the size those, those are very low cost machines that that belong in a small small workshop which which is easy to access 
Um, the larger grinders, like 15 amp grinders, they cost like $80 or so. Uh, but yeah, those are more powerful. So you can be adding more noise and smoke in your garage workshop and, and produce various things. Once again, the limit there being, do you have open source designs that you can work from so that you can make a viable business out of that? So let's go to the next case, um, which is the basic workshop. So uh, when we talk about building the Global Village construction set, um, you can do all the heavy machines in a basic workshop. And that workshop would have the welders and, and torches grinders and hand tools so that basic very basic infrastructure what does that look like so I'll share my screen here um, on a wiki we have a page called basic workshop or how to build four machines in a basic workshop you can take a look at some of the economics there what, what are the costs of now having a serious production infrastructure with which you can build the entire global village construction set so that means you can build a tractor with this you can build a brick press with this anything uh, in metal in heavy metal um, heavy metal construction and not to mention of course with smaller tools you're talking about the possibility of smaller machines like the 3d printers uh, or the enabling torch tables for cutting steel um, basic workshop so basically six five or six five tools here um, so for example when I did the fir very very first first brick press that was literally in like almost without a workshop but I did have a, a regular welder not a MIG welder but just a stick welder uh, I did have an acetylene torch a magnetic drill you don't it's, it's a good device for drilling holes mag drill is a is a device that mounts onto a piece of metal, it locks onto a piece of metal with a magnetic base. So, uh, let's see if we can mag drill just to show you what that looks like. Mag drill is a, is a drill, heavy drill that attaches to a magnetic base and it can get you precise holes. But, you know, that's not really super necessary either because you can torch out a hole. Um, but if, you, if you're talking about large, large holes like one inch this is what you'd like to do but still doable with a with a torch uh, let's go back to basic workshop uh, so actually you can uh, eliminate this magnetic drill because the acetylene torch can get you all of that now a acetylene torch won't be as precise as a magnetic drill with a perfect one inch hole or even a two inch hole or even three inch hole but the acetylene torch can do everything there. And the mag drill isn't so cheap, it's a few hundred bucks. Those are quite expensive still. So literally, MIG welder, acetylene torch, your two core workhorse tools for heavy heavy metal. Uh, and that's $1,500 total, 1,000 for the MIG welder, acetylene torch about 500 bucks. You can get them used, even cheaper than that. Uh, and then you're talking about grinders. So grinders for finishing off metal, uh, get, uh, grinding down sharp corners or cutting off bars, bar stock or flat stock or rebar. Uh, so that's 15 amp gr grinders are about 80. 5 amp grinders are only about $20. Then a, an abrasive 14 inch metal cutoff saw. That's um, so abrasive cutoff saw. I'll just show you what that looks like. Abrasive cutoff saw. Um, it's one of these. Uh, these can cut tubing stock, various material stock. You can you can do up to like even two inch solid metal shafts, but it takes a long time. But hollow tubing sections, pipes, flats, uh, this is all doable. You can fit up to like six inches of height in there. Um, that's like your standard tool. Then uh, what does a grinder look like? Angle grinder. It's these things. Um, you can get these as cheap as 20 bucks for a 5 amp, 4.5 inch uh, grinder. Where you can do metal with that. You can also have blades for a ceramic or, or block, uh, ceramic blades for tile or for uh, earthen materials. So basic, very basic tools. But the idea there is uh, under $2,000 of investment for the above tools, 
you have sufficient tooling so and then there's some few hand tools hammers some wrenches vice allen wrenches pipe wrenches holding magnets speed square L angle measuring tape, soapstone marker, C clamps, vice clamps, a few other tools, and you're you're good to go. You can be building tractors, brick presses, salt pulverizers, power cubes, CNC torch tables, 3D printers, and so forth. Um, so it's it's not so much. It's it's very affordable, and if, and if you get these things on even sale, you can get used or passed down. You, you can get into this kind of production. The the material the the tooling cost is definitely not a barrier to starting up one of these these things uh, if you'd like to get prototyping. Now let's go to a little more advanced version of the workshop. So so here you're talking about the basic workshop allowing you to do just plain human skill. You've got ability to do cut straight lines with things like just using an, an edge. Uh, you can do do holes. This is not CNC computer control. This is just manual work which when you're careful you can do just about anything out of weldments. You can even build an engine out of weldments where you weld pieces of metal together and so forth. Now in a basic advanced workshop we talk about adding some some s computer numerical control CNC machines which make make your capacity much greater because then uh, you can cut parts out in say an hour for what would take you a day or in a day what it would take you a month to do by hand let's say so uh, the main workhorse tool there is the CNC torch table uh, so what is that uh, Google CNC torch table um, or rather let's go to the wiki uh, CNC torch table Let's go to the main page here. Uh, a device which has a, a torch, a cutting torch attached, either like oxyacetylene or, or plasma. Uh, plasma requires some electronics. Oxyacetylene or oxyfuel can cut up to like 7, 10 inch steel. So it's crazy for, with like a $60 torch. Um, we like the oxyacetylene because it's so powerful and, and expensive. This kind of torch here, you can get down to about 80 bucks for a handle that can cut like 7 inch steel, no problem, just like that using oxy fuel. Uh, good luck with doing that with a plasma cutter. I mean, you can, but that machine would cost you like $10,000 or something. Uh, you can do plasma cutting for thin gauge stuff, that's great. If you're talking about some serious industrial stuff and you have a choice between plasma and, and oxy fuel, Oxy, oxy fuel is a clear winner on performance and cost basis. So we're doing torch tables right now with oxy fuel uh, for now, and then of course you can get into oxy hydrogen, which is derived from water. That's a even more effective way to do it because it it burns cooler and it cuts about twice as fast, uh, depending on what kind of th steel thickness. But it's super clean, super effective for oxy hydrogen. That's like the next level because uh, you can't really get hydrogen off the shelf inexpensively. It's a little more expensive. Oxy fuel is very accessible. Um, so right now, and this is what we're actually be building starting tomorrow. Next week, you'll see that our next CNC torch table. But um, CNC torch tables run you about twelve thousand dollars off the shelf. Uh, in our version, we have about fifteen hundred dollars or under for the cost. Um, so in an advanced workshop, the second big machine is that you'd like to have um, the two main additions, I would say, are, so are the CNC torch table and an iron worker machine. What's an iron worker machine? So let's go to the wiki for iron worker machine. And that's a machine that cuts slabs of heavy metal. So this is actually an iron worker hull puncher. So you're talking about one inch or even two inch uh, steel flats or angles that you're cutting or punching holes in. So the the iron worker that we built here, this thing, um, this cuts one by ten inch slabs of steel like butter. Um, it's a very useful device to have if you're working with heavy steel. 
Um, the iron worker machine is a critical part as well as the CNC torch table. This is when you're talking about serious uh, manufacturing of heavy, ma heavy machines. Okay, next machine would be, oh, oh, once again, let's talk about cost there. So 21,000 off the shelf, if you were to get a, an iron worker machine. For us, it was about, um, the whole puncher that we built was $1,600 in materials. The, the other slab shearing iron worker, we built one that was for about $1,000 that worked. And we built another one for more like 5,000 in materials. But yeah, once again, the 10X cost reduction. So CNC mills. Um, so computer numerical controlled mill, so you can now mill precise features in steel. You can get one, heavy duty one for like 17,000 off the shelf used. For us, it's going to be a few thousand, like I, I put 4,000 here. CNC lathes, so, so milling, uh, lathing of round stock for precise shapes, like for axles and wheels and other round geometries. Uh, we'd like to have a heavy-duty drill press, so yes, holes are very, uh, very useful everywhere. But then, if you have a CNC torch table, you can get precise holes pretty much. So maybe you can avoid the heavy-duty drill press here. Um, you'd also want to have a MIG welder, so a MIG metal inert gas, so a nice wire feed welder that's super easy to use, very clean, uh, clean welds, and uh, the last thing is the once again the acetylene torch which you can do in the field, in the shop, just very variable, flexible tool. You can work that to cut, make any cuts uh, in place or on a work table in the field. You can drag this thing out into the field using with your bottles of acetylene and, and oxygen. But if you look at this basic advanced workshop, you can go through this. Once again, all the links here. Uh, it would be 77000 off the shelf. The OSC price here is about 14000 uh, pending... Uh, there's some development, like for example, we're, right now we're next week we're doing the CNC torch table build. So we've got our fourth prototype, which we intend to be uh, also put into the form of a kit. I think we know enough about this to make a really excellent, reliable, mach scalable machine. And we're using the universal axis uh, as part of our product ecology. So that's the basic advanced workshop. You can look at the page on the wiki, just go to basic workshop. Um, the page called basic workshop on the wiki so last i will cover uh the more uh ambitious like the 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 place where you put all these tools in would be the open source microfactory solar microfactory off-grid microfactory and what would that look like so for us right now the current model is a, a ceb structure low-cost structure like we have our current workshop and then you have all this equipment and more uh, including photovoltaics to drive the entire system. If you would like to build one of these, the replication costs, let me pull this up. I actually put this, since I was talking to some people about this, uh, I put this under actually Africa budget. So this would be the budget for if you wanted to build a micro factory that, that has advanced CNC equipment and automation with Arduinos and computers, and put that in a place which has no technology. So you'd, you'd be off-grid, you, you bring in your equipment, and of course, uh, Africa, you know, a lot of people ask about Africa, like, we can save Africa here and stuff. Uh, but uh, the idea there is, what's an autonomous workshop look like? So the use case for us is running so so the equipment base in such a such a facility would be you got a uh, core of cnc torch tables uh for an off-grid micro factory you do want to get to oxyhydrogen you might not have acetylene and oxygen bottles but you can produce oxyhydrogen so hydrogen and oxygen mix m mixture by electrolysis of water uh, we're assuming that water is going to be available uh, cnc multi-machine so milling drilling lathing then you've got your 3D printer, circuit mill, small laser cutter, filament maker, plastic shredder. So basically the desktop micro factory infrastructure which, where you can take scrap plastic and turn it into filament so you can have your full ability to, do, to make plastic parts. And plastic is a huge part. Like, like for example, in the CNC systems we use, uh, all the complex geometries are made of plastic. So we're making CNC machines out of plastic plus metal. 
Uh, so plastic is very important here. This, we're not talking about hobby plastic and trinkets. We're talking about industrial parts uh, and real manufacturing with CNC machines. So you also, in that budget, I put in a charcoal maker. So if you want to have fuel for engines, because we're, we're going to be both solar and off-grid on, on biomass or direct solar. So gasifier plus engines are part of that infrastructure so you can be running off any biomass source. You've got a tractor uh, to move heavy metal around. You've got a bulldozer to actually either dig the site for the, for the workshop uh, backhoe. So, con so we're, we're building in the ability to construct one of these open source off-grid micro factories, including the ability to replicate them with the equipment base found in one of the micro factories. You got a saw mixer conditioner, a CEB press, welders, hand tools and power tools, iron worker machine. So you've got about a hundred thousand dollar budget for the equipment base. For the building itself, we're investing in a hundred kilowatts of photovoltaics at fifty thousand dollars. There's battery banks, uh, but altogether about a hundred thousand dollars more for uh, it actually a uh, hundred fifty thousand if you include the full off-grid PV system and this is talking about a hundred kilowatts so this is not a small thing this is this is village scale community scale fabrication for a small city uh, so you're talking about an equipment and construction costs you've got a quarter million dollars so if you have a quarter million dollars, you can do this. Now, at this point, uh, to get there, we've got a lot of the machines and techniques in order to pull this off. But the missing thing is uh, making this a replicable package. So as we go forward to document this fully as with, with detailed instructions for both the buildings, the machines, uh, and also some of the products that would come with, from the machines, uh, and that were the budget narrative, you can talk about this, but basically um, for the total budget is $1.6 million to get to turnkey, replicable, open source, off-grid micro factories. Um, most of that $1.6 million, which is in fact about $1.4 million of that, goes to uh, R&D, so development, hiring staff to document and so forth. So. If this could be crowdsourced, this is great. But if you have $1.6 million and you'd like to build the world's first invest in building, this is a three-year plan to get to the actual full documentation and so forth. So you can look at the numbers and see if this is anything interesting. But I think this kind of a package here could change the world in terms of you're bringing uh, advanced distributed manufacturing into places that don't have it, uh, which could be the fourth world in the United States. It could be... a uh, a rundown community in the United States or something reinvigorating production anywhere, uh, whether that's the first world or, or the developing world. Uh, so take a look at that. There's a, so that's, that's the budget for the off-grid open source microfactory. Um, take a look at that. But other than that, to summarize, uh, the main points to take away from this is that uh, to, to get set up in basic production using digital machines today uh, is as low as $500 in your college dorm with a single 3D printer, assuming you have a robust base of designs that you can produce from and open source blueprints, which uh, today are definitely a shortage. Uh, we've got some things already, but uh, it's very little uh, out of the whole Global Village construction set. There's, you can cer certainly produce certain things like the printers, tractor, brick press, there, there are options already. Uh, but depending on exactly what you can do, like we definitely don't have a lot of designs right now for 3D printing that are excellent, amazing products that can make money that are industrial quality with distributed quality control. That's, we're working on that part. Um, but $500 gets you up and running. And in the case of making actual heavy machines in a, in a smaller work, workshop where you have ability to weld and torch, uh, about $2,000, and then you can get going. So definitely the materials are not the, the sorry, the equipment's not the uh, limiting factor. 
in many places. It's about your initiative. If you'd like to do this, you certainly can uh, with by learning some skills or having the initiative or vision to do that, to, to bring distributed production to different places. So uh, I'll leave it at that. That's basic budgets for the, the micro factories. Um, uh, on the home scale, the open source micro factory with the filament production, so you're recycling plastic, that is a big deal. Uh, that uh, definitely that is not really taking off yet, but hopefully with projects like ours or precious plastic that may become more more popular for people to practically make products out of the waste stream for the, the circular economy. But I think I'll leave it at that and please feel free to feel free to leave comments below the video and I'll leave it right there a reporting here from the open source microfactory startup camp at the OSC headquarters so thank you for listening and we'll see you soon